Now, we reported yesterday that people in an Islamist compound are stockpiling guns in preparation for the Trump administration. We're going to show you a map on the screen which lists all of the compounds all across the country. This is the Islamist group. They claim they've got compounds all over the place. Joining us now is the man who brought us the report. His name is Ryan Morrow, National Security Analyst with the Clarion Project. Right, you've got people inside these compounds? We do. We have um, a significant number of people who are operating not just inside the compounds, but also among those that are living outside the compounds. It's a group called Muslims of America. Uh, they used to be known as Jamaat al fukra but then they carried out a bunch of terrorist attacks and decided to drop the name. It ultimately culminated in one of the camps being shut down in 1992 in Colorado. The rest of the infrastructure remained, including these same villages that you've been talking about. Now, they're accumulating weapons, assault rifles, explosives. Yes. Uh, what do they say amongst themselves that they're going to do with these weapons? It depends on who they're talking to, because sometimes they'll lie to their own members. So in some cases, they'll say this is for self-defense, which is also sometimes how you describe jihad. Sometimes it's more blatantly referred to as jihad. But this arming and this type of training that they've going on, has been going on, and we've got video of some of the training going on at their headquarters called Islamburg in New York State, has been going on since the beginning. What the breaking news is that we heard from multiple sources, and they provided information to substantiate this, is that with the election of Donald Trump, they believe that their end time prophecies that they believe in are now being fulfilled. Donald Trump is part of a satanic Jewish conspiracy and they are preparing for the camps to be raided and what, to fight back. What is, okay, what is the response of law enforcement who I presume you've made aware of this? Well, most of them are in shock because most don't know that the group even exists. Everything is about Al-Qaeda and ISIS. It does not appear that in most cases the FBI is sharing information on the local level. And so I educate law enforcement across the country. Most of the time they don't know about this or they've heard a little bit. Um, and so we've accumulated thousands and thousands of documents to help law enforcement with this. And just about an hour ago, we opened up a new website called FUCRAFILES.com where people can learn more and look at our declassified documents about the group. Now, Ryan, you can hold this you can have these weapons right and if you've got a permit you you can have these weapons and the FBI or law enforcement cannot go up to the compound and say we just check in here's a search warrant we just check law enforcement cannot do that right so well, what are they gonna do well they've engaged in a lot of criminal activity and again a terrorist history so you can make the argument that uh, there's some level of probable cause here because drug trafficking massive charter school scams all sorts of things to raise millions of dollars that then goes back to their leadership in Pakistan their leader Sheikh Jalani is the man that Daniel Pearl Wall Street Journal reporter was going to interview when he was abducted and killed and so there's a section on our new website going over that incident because I'm not convinced that Sheikh Jalani wasn't involved in that your position is it sounds like and I'm not, I don't, I've not read your website, it sounds like you believe that this is a Muslim force in America prepared to attack at, for whatever reason. Is that what you say? Based on their own material and statements, yes. It's, it's an enemy army, fully armed, ready to attack. You say that? And so do the FBI documents that are declassified and posted on our website. And by the way, also a number of people have been arrested because they're felons, not allowed to have guns. And so then they have other members that don't have criminal records buy the guns and then pass them. And there's a pattern of that. What do you want done about this? Well, I agree with about a dozen Muslim organizations that we rally together saying that this qualifies as a foreign terrorist organization. They've been looked upon as a domestic group. They're American citizens. But if you are a foreign terrorist organization, that changes things because then it becomes illegal for the group to operate here and it severs, at the very least, the link between them and the Pakistani terror network. Quick question. How many people live on, say, the, the, the compound in upstate New York, Islamabad, whatever mm -hmm. it's called, how many people are living there on the compound? They've said about 200 to 300, but they move in and out. Altogether, though, the estimates range between 1,500 and 3,000 mm -hmm. members but it doesn't appear that includes the families and they have a lot a lot of kids and multiple wives Ryan Morrow you better come back soon and tell us what the progress is here because well, that's uh, kind of a shocking story Ryan thanks for joining us so thank we you appreciate it the name of that website again uh, fucrafiles.com how do you spell it f-u-q-r-a thank you very much sir we'll see you again thank you